This is a quick video on balancing equations. This video is for those people who are looking at balancing equations for the very first time. This is a really, really important skill in GCSE chemistry. So for example, if I have my reactants A plus B giving us only a single product, C in this case, if, for example, the mass of A is 80 grams and the mass of B is 20 grams, what would be the mass of C? Well, the answer should be 100 grams. And the reason why is because of this concept in chemistry called conservation of mass. And what the simplest states is that the total mass of the reactants must equal to the total mass of the products. So for example, if you have a look, A is 80 grams, B is 20 grams. Together on the left hand side, they are 100 grams. We only have one product in this case, and that has to be 100 grams. If, say, I complicate a bit more, let's say we have a second product, D. Let's say, for example, A is, so C is 75 grams. What would be the mass of D? Well, we know the left-hand side, the reactants, the total mass is 100 grams. C is 75 grams. So the difference between 100 grams and 75 grams is obviously 25 grams. Once again, this is because the mass is conserved, or the mass of the atoms are conserved in a chemical reaction. So here's my first chemical reaction. I've got the element hydrogen reacting with the element oxygen to give us our compound water. So what I would do in this case is I'm going to separate the reactants on the left and the products or the one product on the right by drawing a line where the arrow is. Here I've got two hydrogens. The little two means that there's two hydrogens. I've also got two oxygens on the left. On the right hand side, I have got oops, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Now you can see the number of atoms on the left and the right are obviously unbalanced. Now there's a couple of rules you have to bear in mind before you start balancing this. Rule number one is you should not change the little numbers. Okay, so the little numbers are called subscripts. So it's this little two here, for example, that two there, and that two. You cannot change them, and you cannot add them onto existing elements or compounds. So for example, you might think, oh, I'm going to balance the oxygens by putting a two over here. Well, if you do that, you end up with a completely different compound, which is hydrogen peroxide. So you cannot do that. Rule number two is you can only add big numbers in front of each molecule. So what that means is, for example, I could put a number two here, I could put a number four here, any number to balance this equation. Now, this number, or these big numbers, have to go at the front of each molecule, the, one that you're, the ones that you're trying to balance. So you can't, for example, say, put a two over here. It has to be at the front. So now that we know our two rules, let's balance this equation. We have two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. So I'm going to leave the hydrogens alone for now. We have two oxygen atoms on the left, but only one on the right. Now remember what I said, you can't change the little numbers or add them on. So I can't put a two where the oxygen is. So I have to only add a big number in front of this molecule of water. So to balance the oxygens, I put a big two over here. Now this creates a problem, okay, because now we have 2 times 2 of hydrogen, so we now have 4 hydrogens in total on the right hand side, but we only have 2 here on the left. And you can solve that by putting a big number in front of this hydrogen so that there are 4 hydrogens also on the left. Now if you have a look, all the atoms 
are balanced on both sides of the equation. So the reactant side is equal to the product side. Okay, so we can now rub these bits off. And we end up with that as our final equation. So the first question is an easy example. I'm going to let you pause the video and balance this equation. So you have Mg plus HCl gives you MgCl2 and H2. Okay, so if you have a look at the number of magnesium atoms on the left and right, it's balanced. There's one Mg on the left, one on the right. The number of hydrogens on the left, there's one and there's two on the right. So straight away, that's an unbalanced. Uh, if you look at the chlorines, there's two chlorines on the right, one over here. So you can solve this by simply putting a big two in front of the HCl. So now you have two hydrogens on the left, two on the right, two chlorines on the left, two on the right. So here's our second example. This is a medium difficulty balancing equations example. So you have Al, aluminium, Br2, bromine, giving us uh, aluminium bromide, which is Al, Br3. Now to balance this, I'm going to give you a quick tip. If you're trying to balance the bromines, you need to find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. Okay, so... The aluminiums are already balanced for now, so I'm going to leave that. If you look at the Br2 on the left and the Br3 on the right, they're obviously unbalanced. So I have two bromines in the left, three on the right. So I need to find the lowest common multiple of two and three. So I need to get both of these up to six. So that means I do the three over here. So three times two, there's six Brs. And I put a two in front of this, because two times three is six and now I've got six bromines. But once again, this creates a problem because we now have two aluminiums, so we have to make sure we put a two in front of this so that this equation is balanced. This next example is another difficult example, but it's not any more difficult than the previous one, except that this time there are brackets involved. So if you have a look at this compound over here, you see there's an OH and a little 2. What this simply means is that there are two OH groups in this compound. So there's two oxygens and two hydrogens. Make sure you bear this in mind when you're trying to balance this equation. You can pause the video now and try to balance this. So we're going to start off with the calciums. There's one calcium on the left, two, one calcium on the right, so that's balanced. If you look at the number of oxygens on the left, there are two. There's one on the right, so immediately that's unbalanced. I'm going to try and put a two over here. So now I have two oxygen atoms on both sides. I've got two hydrogens here, one hydrogen there. So in total, there's three hydrogens on the left. There is four hydrogens on the right. So to balance that, I'm going to put a two over here. So now I've got two here and two here, four on the left. Check the chlorines, you've got two chlorines because you put two there, and you've got two chlorines there. So that means all the atoms now are balanced in this equation, and this will probably be worth two marks in the exam because you put two numbers to balance it. 